every day, everywhere, across New Zealand. From the smallest town to the biggest city. We have the finest tools. An expert advice for any job. For any person. Who are we? Who are we? Who are we? We are Nelson, Hamilton, Pukekohe, Rangiora. We are Trade Zone. We are Trade Zone. We are Trade Zone. Trade Zone. Proud to bring you Trade Zone Addicted to Fishing. I'm Nikki Sinden, and since I could hold a handline, I have been addicted to fishing. Whether it's stray lining for snapper, jigging for kingfish, dropping deep for harpooka, or jumping in and going spearfishing, I love it all. each week as I road trip around the country, travelling to both New Zealand's most iconic fishing destinations and stepping off the beaten track to show just how good Kiwi fishing really is. Whether it's a girls trip, fishing with a local or riding solo, I am on a constant quest to satisfy my insatiable fishing addiction. Welcome to Trade Zone Addicted to Fishing. We have calamari in mind, so the target species this week is fresh, tasty squid. And we're featuring squid guru, Rudy Lim. Well, I've been fishing since I was probably around about five, five year old. I started off with my old man taking me off to the wharf, just watching him fish, and him giving me his rod to have a, have a cast and catching my first fish from there. And ever since then, it just started becoming a passion. I love, um, I love squid fishing the most. The reason being is because I love the thrill of the chase. Um, I love the, the challenge of it, to be honest. It is, it is a niche market, so um, a, a niche kind of fishing. So I like being part of a small but, um, but effective group, I guess you can say that. So the plan with Nikki is um, we're going to be targeting the squids in the morning. Although daytime can be a bit finicky if the conditions are not right, the backup plan would be an evening squid fish, probably target around the rocks. And I think we'll be doing a bit of a catch and cook session. Really looking forward to look, um, going out with Nikki. Um, I heard that she's only caught a squid a handful of times, so it'll be really cool to um, take her out and um, show her how to, um, how to grab one, one, of the, one of these little critters. Squid fishing. Hello, good morning. Good How you morning. guys doing? I'm excited. I've got the squid master here. Uh, <laughs> Rudy catches squid when no one is catching squid. Um, he actually runs a page. What's your page called? Our uh, page is called Egging for Squid for that. Egging for Squid. It's on Perfect. Facebook. And I feel like you're always out there catching squid. Is that the truth or does it just feel like that? It just feels like that uh, most okay. of the time. <laughs> it seems to be a really good time of year at the moment to catch squid, isn't it? Indeed, this is the perfect time of year um, yeah. for the squids. So we're actually filming this just post lockdown in May and um, you were sharing with me the other day that they are in thick numbers at this time of the year, is that right? Yes, they are, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, they'll be in thick numbers, um, not in size, probably a size in about a month or two, but in definitely in numbers. Will they be in big numbers and big in a month? Yes. Or Yeah? Definitely. Oh, wow. Cool. Okay, so obviously when the temperature starts to drop, that's when they really come in. Yeah. Where do they go in the meantime? Are they out deeper? Out deeper, actually. Um, and sporting, sporting size, probably about like a small sporting size just um, throughout the year. Okay, cool. Well, I have to admit, I'm a bit of a novice when it comes to squid fishing. I've only done it a handful of times, so... Um, will you be my teacher today? Oh, definitely. We've got all the gears here and everything, and yeah, perfect for that. Awesome. All right, well, that sun's just starting to come up, so this is kind of the perfect time, isn't it? Yes, definitely. Okay. Awesome. Let's get into it. Woo! Here you go. Bit your setup. This is like the lightest setup in the world. I don't think Shimano does anything lighter, except for maybe kids' rods and reels. But this is the Sustain 2500 HG, and this is on a specific egging. Uh, rod. Why is it so important to use a specific egging rod? So many people say, can't you just use a soft bait setup? You know? The reason for that is um, uh, egging rods are uh, designed to be soft at the, at the tip, uh, uh, so it's more really sensitive. Whippy action. And you do have your backbone if you do come across like octopus and stuff like that. Okay. So yeah, that's the, that's the only reason. And these are quite interesting little jigs, eh? Yes, they are. So they've got a 2.5 uh, weight on them. So, what's, what's the action that we're actually doing today? So basically the action is um, 
the show you, I guess. Yeah, just show us. So, what you want to be doing is having a cast. Yeah. Let it sink right. Let it sink right in the bottom. Yeah. And. Uh, Keep and then it, you just slowly retreat? So keep in, keep in touch um, with your line. Once it, once it reaches the bottom, you give it a, a big, a small nudge like that, and yeah. just let it sink down to the bottom again. So this is that. Do you catch much in terms of bycatch? Um, You're saying octopus? So the other, the other, um, yeah, the other species uh, for, the, for this sort of fishing would be octopus, yeah. yeah. Uh, you do get probably, after in every uh, five to six trips, you get one or two octopus, yeah. Uh, have you ever caught a snapper? Uh, yep, so uh, all, all kind of bikers, so pretty much snappers, trevallis, uh, you get carwise a lot, and um, the, the odd kingies. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Mate, let's get into it. Sweet. So what you, what you generally do is you, you pass straight towards the rock, and you work your way in, uh, work your way towards the boat. Uh, but you need to uh, make sure, like you're always in um, in touch with your, your jig. Yeah. So, like even like light winds and some of that, just to keep it. The jigs that we use uh, to catch a squid are called eggy, and that motion of flicking the jig, um, targeting them, uh, targeting squids, uh, it's called egging. That's where they derived from um, from the word eggy. It's a Japanese word for squid jigs. Oh, bottom. At the bottom. Yeah. Jig number one gone. Sorry, Rudy. That's alright. I'll replace all the jigs we that's, use. That's I all, promise. That's, that's totally fine. So. I lost my leader too. Okay. First cast. Second cast. Oh, we got one. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Coming up after the break. The calamari tastes mighty fun. This week, we're fishing for the humble squid. Firstly off the boat during the day, and then off land at night. I fish about three to four times a week, chasing after either pukas, snappers, um, or squids. If you want to target squid, it's pretty um, pretty straightforward. You either choose to, to go the, during the daytime or you go to the nighttime. With daytime, you have to select your daytime sort of colors. You're looking for more natural colors, more uh, darker colors. And in the nighttime, you'll be looking at um, more glow-in-the-dark colors and your pink and orange kind of colors. We've got Adam here from Raymarine. Thanks for coming out with us, Adam. That's cool. I've been trying to get you out on this boat for a while now. <laughs> yeah, it's taken a while, but uh, yeah, time's finally come. So. Finally here, finally here. Now, Adam knows everything that there is to know about our Raymarine setup. And um, something that I use from time to time, which I'd love to know more about, actually, is yep. the uh, Real Vision 3D. Yep. Can you tell the viewers a little bit more about that? Yeah, so basically Real Vision 3D takes a combination of your, your side vision, your down vision and your sonar, and it overlays it into a real easy-to-use map. Um, our Axiom displays have it in what's called a GPS track mode, so what it's basically doing right now is it's drawing a, a 3D render of the bottom, um, and basically, as the boat's moving, it's building up a map for, the, for a history of the sonar period. So what we can actually do is we can scroll back through time and, and really hone in on some of the rocks and structure down on the bottom. Um, great for diving, great for soft baiting, but today what we're using it for is we're trying to find the rocks and obviously the weed that is associated with rocks and then that's hopefully where we find the squid. And um, what's the depth range that it goes to? So it's rated to about 90 metres. Um, on a on an average boat where most people use it, um, it's sort of about half that. With any sonar, the easiest rule of thumb is the average person can sort of get about 50%. So if you want to see fish in 450 metres, you get a transducer for 900. Um, same thing there. So if you work on a 50-50 basis, you're never too disappointed. So obviously, just for the viewers, we've got um, three buttons on either side of the um, of our main Axiom Pro system here. And they're the buttons of things that we use quite often, like the bilge pump, um, you know, night anchor, things like that. So night anchor, you can just go bang and then it's got all our settings for um, what we want to be set up for at night time so you don't actually have to press all these different things and then the digital switching um, on our smaller setup here we can just press a button and it's got everything and it's all digital which is quite cool yeah, so yeah um, that is the one benefit of the mode so normally if you get on the boat you may have to flip five switches you could just press a, press a boat on mode yeah. and then basically everything just goes on one button push makes it real easy and simple yeah, to use. That's so good. That's pretty cool. We've whipped around the corner and tucked into a bay where there's less wind which really helps with our squid fishing. Get it Rudy, get it. Oh 
Oh, we got one. Smith. <laughs> yeah, let's, oh, let's put it in there. Oh, let, oh. It, let, it, let it ink first. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Will it ink again? No, nah, so just lift it up slowly. All right. We'll just put it on the deck now. So Rudy just taught us a, a sweet little tip. When you've got it hooked, obviously you net it because it could come off if you pull it straight in with the trace, but um, it always is going to ink. So hold it right to the side of the net, let it do that before you bring it in. And then if you put it back into the salt water, it can re-ink. So funny, like, you're going to see this beautiful squid on TV and what you won't realise is how many casts actually goes into catching one of these things. Indeed, indeed. You know, like, how many casts do you reckon we've done today? Well, you, you've done. Over uh, 60, I guess. At least 60 casts. We won't bother showing you guys all that because you probably don't want to see that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, hey, how do you pick these up? So basically, you <laughs> wrong, wrong person to pick it up, but yeah, you can pick it up from here. And yeah. you just grab it by, by that and you can just um, lift it up if you want to do the honest. We're all good. Is this like a trick? Like, is <laughs> no. something going to go... Are they going to re-ink me? No, they're not going to re-ink. So basically, um, what they do is... Oh, for them to re-ink, it needs to have a, a certain amount of salt water. Um, they have to activate their small sack in them. OK. So pretty much that. Yeah. God, they're beautiful creatures. No, go for it. Just, just grab it down here and just pick it up. Yeah, the where's the beak? How uh, big is up it there? up there? It's not, it's not okay. going to do anything, so... Oh, my God. You are so slimy. See? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I don't know how to hold it properly. The beak is underneath here. Um, oh, yeah, that black can thing. Can you see that? Yeah. So if you push this one in a bit, so you can see it. Um, oh, wow. So it's trying to bite it as well. Yeah. Oh! No fingers in there, please. <laughs> yeah, let's not do that. And then with these ones, they will just... All the suckies. All right, so what do you got there, Rudy? So basically, I've got here is um, an icky tool. It's a, a tool used to kill the squid, mm -hmm. um, put it out of misery. So squid has um, three, three hearts in them. Three hearts. So they've got one heart in this I this corner. You eat the heart. <laughs> Can't really see. It. So, so you got one one heart over here, another heart, and just the, the brain part. Yep. So how this tool, so how this tool works is detaches um, the body, the body from, um, from everything. So that's how you kill it, and then with the head. So you go slide it downways towards the body, yep. wiggle it in, and then you come forward and do it again. Come forward to, to do the to, to do the head part. So then they should just just change to translucent um, after this. So oh. that's pretty much what it looks like when it's dead. Awesome. All right. It's a kia So, since it's our first squid, what we're going to have here for you... <laughs> what are we doing? Just, just to eat that. To eat it? Yep. <laughs> eat the sucky thing? Yep. Why don't it, like... Just chew on it. It's all good. You've chosen, like, the biggest tentacle. <laughs> are you going to do it with me? Yep, I'll do okay. it with you. <laughs> it's still pulsating. Yep, that's all right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, three, oh my god, I can't even get it off my finger. Three, three two, two, one. one. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I love, I love calamari, but that was weird. <laughs> that was weird. That's all right. Not a fan. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. <laughs> Tackle Tips and Tactics, brought to you by Smart Marine. Today for the Smart Marine Tackle Tip, we're just going to have a little chat about why we use such a nice light setup for egging for squid. Rudy, tell us all about it. So basically here we have is, um, a Stratic, a 2500 Stratic, a Sustain 2500, spool with 15 pound line and uh, on a on a salty advance um, iggy rod. A lot of guys and girls have been asking us can they use a softbed rod to, as to compare to an iggy rod. The difference between the iggy rod and the softbed rod is this top half is, uh, is really sensitive and you've got obviously the, the backbone for casting jigs, yes. Awesome. Well, there you have a team. That's why we don't use our soft baiting setup. <laughs> for all your fishing needs, head on down to your local Smart Marine store. Can't get much fresher than that, eh? After the break, it's calamari time before we hit the rocks and try our luck at night time land-based squid fishing. Oh, my gosh! This 
this week, we've been targeting squid with Guru Rudy Lim. The thing I like about fishing is um, going out, catching a feed, taking it back to my kids on the Sunday, um, which is one of the days that we used to cook together. Yeah, just the, the thrill of providing for your family, to be honest, um, rather than chasing a PB. You can say that. <laughs> We dive on most of our areas before before we squid fish it. That gives us an understanding of our, the whole structure and what and where to cast um, when targeting them um, from shore. Right, so that wind has picked up massively. So I think what we'll do is probably head around the corner, find a nice little sheltered bay, set up the barbecue, and show you guys how we do ocean to plate. We've got all the ingredients to do salt and pepper squid. And then we're going to take you guys land-based fishing for squid at night time. Let's go. We're going to flip the squid the other way around, backside up, and size down the middle, like so, trying to, trying to avoid the, um, the ink sac. Grab the whole gut cavity, backbone. Grab the whole wings, and just Pretty much just comes off. And what we're doing is just making uh, pieces of it. it goes in the flour mixture. Can't get much fresher than that, eh? That's fine. Let's go. Dig in. Much better than <laughs> All right, guys, well, we've, we've come out here. We're back at the same spot that we actually caught, well, Rudy caught the squid that day. But as you can see, we've picked a gem of a night. It is freezing, uh, hence all the warm clothes. But I have a good, I've, I've got squid feelings. I feel like this is going to be a good night. Low tide soon, eh, Rudy? Yeah, I mean... Rudy's got his gumboot rod holder ready to go and we have a sneaking feeling that this is going to be good because there's been hardly any rain, there's no swell, beautiful calm winds and the water's really clear. So we can even cast, like sight cast and see where we want to target the squid. Do you normally get a few here Rudy? Yes, we definitely normally get a few here. Yeah, just talking to someone, met some of the locals at the wharf before. Bumped into like five different people already had big yarns and everyone's like, oh yeah, the squid are going off. So, you know, sometimes the cameras actually scare them away, but I'm hoping that that doesn't happen tonight. How deep is it out there? It would only be like five metres, eh? Uh, the middle is five metres and this side is about a metre to two metres. Seem to make that same. So, if if you can't do that, what you do is you wind it tight and you just just on the wrist. No one said that squid fishing was going to be easy, and these guys are proving to be just as elusive as from the boat. I'm hoping that as the sun goes down, our luck will change. This is going to be the squid of a thousand casts. Adam's just joined us. And we've got three of us casting now. Lost one earlier. Could see it right there. Came off. Oh, oh we're on. I'll get the net. Oh, it's an octopus. No. <laughs> yeah, it's an octopus. Is it? That's cool. How cool are octopus, man? I reckon they're just the coolest creatures. First cast with the new jig that you recommended. That's really cool. High five. <laughs> is that, do you normally get octopus? Yes, you do normally get so This is on the um, medium to um, medium oh. size, medium to small size. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Caught to the Excuse camera. Me. <laughs> um, usually we get we get ones Much around, bigger. around about that sort of size, but yeah. yeah. No, that's indeed. It's a really good catch. Awesome. Do you want to take it home for sashimi? Yep, indeed. This is Reed, the man behind the camera. He's going to show you how you can dispatch this octopus. Hopefully. Hopefully. I've done this in a very long time. But you should be able to. Grab it behind the ears. Behind the ears. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> Look at 
<laughs> Get the tentacles in your face. And now it should blow. Oh, it's dead. Yeah. See yeah, what it. Color. So you just bit it's it over the eyes. Of suction. That's dead now. So you bite it just yeah on the other side of the eyes right there, and you just pierce its brain. Wow. Get another go just in case. <laughs> There we go. Yes! Where are you? High five. Nice one, Adam. Oh, that was a terrible one. Oh, he's such a cute little squish. There you go. You want to hold it? <laughs> what was the technique? Don't give up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate. Octopus, squid, I don't care. We'll take it. That is awesome. What is this the normal size or this little? Uh, no, this is on the um, the little side of the scale, but um, yeah, still, nevertheless, it's still a squid. <laughs> so, so, hey man, squids are squid, you know, definitely. My husband and I went over to Florida, and my husband potentially caught caught the world's smallest swordfish, and I said, "Honey, swordfish is a swordfish. There's millions of people that have never caught one, so you're right, a squid is a squid." Well, hey, look, guys, thank you so much for joining us. This is the squid of a thousand casts, I swear to God. And we'll see you guys again next week on Trade Zone Addicted to Fishing. Yeah. Gear, Care and Catch, brought to you by Trade Zone. Hi, Nikki, welcome to tomorrow. Thank you, it's nice to be back. How's things? Cold. It's very freezing it's here cold. today, isn't it, in Timaru? Yeah, yeah. It sure is. Right, yeah. so what's the product that we're gonna have a chat about today? So we've got this alum lube portable diesel container mm -hmm. and this one's a 450 litre so you can get them in different sizes from 200, 450, 600. Ideal for your farmers, your contractors, a few guys are sort of having a party or something like that, need to fill up your generators and what have you. Could also use it for throwing on the back of the truck or oh, on the most... back of the boat perhaps. Yeah, It'd ideal. Be good if you're going offshore for like a week. <laughs> it would be too, you wouldn't know? it? Definitely. Does it have a pump inside? All you have to do is just open this here and as you can see, you've got your 12 volt Italian pump and there's your dispenser, which will dispense at 50 litres a minute. You can also get a dispenser with a meter on it so you can see how much you're how actually much doing and that sort of thing. So yeah, you just hook this up onto your battery or you can get a socket which will plug into the back of most utes and that sort of thing. So yeah, 12 volt socket, so yes. Anyone that's looking for one of these, pop on down to your local trade zone store. For all your engineering needs, head in store or order online at www.tradezone.co.nz. Check out our YouTube page for tips, tricks and entire episodes of every season. And like us on Facebook to keep up to date with competitions and all your fishing news. Tradezone Addicted to Fishing is proud to be with Extreme Boats, powered by Honda Marine. We tow it around in our custom-built G-Fab trailer on the back of our Mercedes-Benz V6. When we're not out on the water, it's all stored away in our BuildLink kit set shed. Smart Marines supply us with our Shimano tackle and we find the best fishing spots with our Raymarine. We finish the job thanks to trail trades and move in precision thanks to Seastar. We maintain our gear using 10 tools and we keep up to date thanks to New Zealand Fishing News Magazine and it all keeps performing thanks to Trade Zone.